How a business owner making $250,000 is more than an employee making over half a million dollars, part number two. So continuing off from part one, since a lot of people suggested, the link is in the description if you haven't seen part one of the video. So now we will show you and explain the process of how our tax code is very unfair towards you guys, the employees. So you must understand the system is built on individuals who are able to think outside the box and create products that serve the market. So basically anyone who serves the market is the one that gets all the revenue. So you think about it, the software and electronics that you're using to watch this video in this case, it doesn't you know, just poof out of thin air, someone has to make it. Once you create the product and own a business, that is where the benefits start to trickle in. The most sneaky part is the majority of the people don't know that this is actually a perk and it is not taught in college unless you major in like, let's say accounting and finance, but especially in accounting and you major in taxes. Since the tax topic is very broad, let's start with sole proprietors, which majority of people are if they don't want to register a business with the state, meaning they don't want to have all the extra expenses. So try to integrate a business into daily life operations, such as having an office in your home and going out to eat with clients are a few ways that you can integrate business with personal lifestyle. So your businesses can create a lifestyle that helps a lot in maximizing tax deductions. Let's say if your business cannot relate to your personal, then generally most people would not pursue new loopholes. So if you want to continue to build wealth, then opening more than one business that integrates with your lifestyle and produces more income generally would be the best way to maximize deductions. So with every business comes with more responsibility, which leads to the next thing you must do. So keep in mind that when you build new businesses, there are more headaches, but depending how you manage the headaches, that is where it comes in, whether you make it or break it. The first thing you have to understand is Bookkeeping is a must if you want to have itemized deductions. This means that you must keep all records of your business finances to a T. So like say for example, keeping scripts, anything you purchase would be used to back up your claims if the IRS ever questions about your purchases. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people make purchases that do not relate to their business. So when, when you collect receipts from your purchases, it's always recommended to label them on the goods slash services that you use for. So just in case you need to find them, they'll be a lot easier. So this is a reassurance that generally protects you as a consumer and it's a really easy habit to build, let's face it. If you can't do that, then why are you building a business? To keep track of your expenses, most generally use products such as Microsoft Excel Sheet to software programs used by professionals such as QuickBooks Online, Xero, and many other programs. Once you keep a record of all expenses, generally most individuals create a balance sheet and income statement to categorize where all the money went to. So this data itself is very helpful in filling out what type of deductions you could take. Now this brings down to business owners who have access to resources more than employees. So this is the first step that you must understand if you are a business owner to have access to more of these benefits. If you're not running a business that you claim ownership of then, then there is nothing much you can do. This is how it is. And if you understand this, then most people will not be doing what they're doing today and you wouldn't be watching this video. So now there are different forms of businesses and I'm going to simplify it by showing you two types of businesses that most people would generally go through. Number one, sole proprietor, which is a business that isn't a registered entity, is subject to the same rules as a general as a business owner. They are not registered with the state and they operate as every other general businesses. So here's the kicker. The kicker is that you don't have as much legal protection compared to registered businesses, meaning your assets can be targeted. So let's assume that you make a mistake, then you can be targeted directly instead of your business, which brings down to number two. Number two, you got registered businesses. Registered businesses is an entity that is registered with the state and generally would be more preferred method out of the two. Registered businesses generally have more legal coverage and have certain tax advantages that will be covered in future videos if you guys request it down below. Which brings on to the last one, number three. So you have both businesses, they can both use form schedule C for inputting tax deductions. So now how much you can deduct is based dependent on an item's price. You got the character of the item, such as vehicle and hardware and the life of the asset usage. Meaning for example, the IRS considers computers to last around five years and tools to last around three years of the lifespan. So each item in this category generally depends on its cost and the type of business. 
More expensive purchases may take a few years to deduct the whole amount like for example, let's say a strictly used for a business vehicle cannot be deducted all at once but in a span of 5 years. And the reason why behind this is because they don't want to let you to take all types of tax deductions. They want to make it more difficult because America is a consumer economy. They want you to spend more. So you have to think outside the box. And looking through all of this, in conclusion, generally finding a good CPA would be your best bet in finding loopholes in tax deductions. So doing taxes yourself is generally recommended if it's as simple as an employee or you have a lot of time in your hands, which means you have not reached that point yet where your business becomes so big you cannot manage it anymore. So if you're gonna go through a different route, one habit you must have for life is keeping receipts for bookkeeping. Bookkeeping can be done by yourself in the beginning, but once your businesses grow to the point, there's only so much time in your hands before you're getting overwhelmed. We only have 24 hours a day, and you gotta do way more other things, for example, like sleeping half the day. But when starting a business, you want to have low overhead costs and you have a lot of time. But once a business, for example, maybe you guys can subscribe button down below is like successful, the script will flip and sacrifices will need to be made. So if you guys have any more questions, make sure to comment down below, hit the subscribe button down below and the like button. Now, if you have anything else that I haven't mentioned in this video, write it down below and I'll make a part three. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.